Breaking news this hour, Bloomberg is reporting that President Biden is set to ban U.S. imports of Russian oil as soon as today. Our next guest is floating a bill in Washington uh, to wean the U.S. off of uh, foreign energy. And joining us now, Senator Ted Cruz of Texas. He unveiled his Energy Freedom Act uh, on Friday. And, and it would be different than what we're doing now. Uh, how, Senator? Well, Joe, good morning. Good to be with you. Uh, the Energy Freedom Act would be dramatically different from what we're doing now. It would expedite the application uh, to export liquid natural gas. It would ex expedite permitting. It would speed up the leasing both onshore and offshore. You know, when Joe Biden came in the very first week in office, he shut down the Keystone Pipeline. He destroyed 11,000 high-paying jobs, including 8,000 union jobs. He immediately froze new leases both on federal land onshore and on federal land offshore. That's had a dramatic effect. We're seeing the prices skyrocketing at the pump. And, you know, it, it really is striking. In 2019, the United States became a net, net energy exporter. We are an oil and gas superpower. And yet under Joe Biden last year, for the first time since then, America stopped being a net energy exporter as our production went down. And, and the result of Biden's presidency has been that the enemies of America, countries like Russia, like Iran, like Venezuela, are all uh, getting stronger, getting richer, getting more aggressive, getting more hostile, because the president is simultaneously weakening our own ability to produce energy and strengthening their ability to produce energy. I got to say, it's, it's backwards on both fronts. But, but Senator, we're... The Biden administration are pikers compared to Germany and Europe, and, and it, it's kind of a global True. movement. All you got to do is go to the to go to the world, go to Davos, and you will hear top down about the most urgent emergency is is climate change versus nukes versus chemical waste versus you know take your pick versus everything that else is right. going on in the world. So we're actually behind Europe. So this has been going on for for a while. What would you do to, to change the zeitgeist of, of just this this green frenzy that the entire globe is, is involved mm -hmm. with right now? It's not just the Biden administration. Mm -hmm. Well, Joe, it's important to understand that the rhetoric uh, of the far left, it, they don't actually believe it. It's not actually about the environment. If, if the only thing you cared about was the environment, let's say you didn't care at all about jobs, you didn't care about inflation, you didn't care about gas prices at the pump skyrocketing, you just cared about inflation, or, or you just cared about the environment. On that metric, the Biden administration is a disaster. Why? When you shut down the Keystone Pipeline, it's not like the Canadians just leave that gas in the tar sands. Instead, they put it on trucks and trains and they ship it south, or they put it on ships and they ship it west to China. Both pollute more, produce more CO2. When you shut down production in the United States, it's not like the rest of the world suddenly ceases driving cars or flying jet airplanes. What happens instead is producers like Russia, producers like the Middle East, produce more. And all of that production is dirtier, it pollutes more, and it emits more carbon emissions, more CO2. So the effect of Joe Biden, the effect of the Greens in Germany, has been more pollution and, and more CO2 emitted to the environment. The, their rhetoric is not what they're trying to do. What they're really trying to do, it's, it's an irrational, uh, emotional response. The Biden administration wants to destroy U.S. energy production. And I got to say, this past week has illustrated it powerfully. You've seen the Biden administration travel to Venezuela, go to Nicolas Maduro, a vicious dictator, an illegitimate government, someone who murders and tortures his own citizens, and beg them to produce oil. You see the Biden administration this week in Vienna with Iran trying to have the Ayatollah Khomeini uh, uh, produce more oil. Uh, and, and it is bizarre that this administration wants enemies of America like Russia and Iran and Venezuela to produce oil and at the same time to destroy jobs here in America. And I got to say, I think a lot of people are realizing the foolishness of it. Now, you mentioned the news breaking about Biden imposing an embargo on Russian oil. I think, I think finally, that's the right thing to do. That's what I've been pressing the Biden administration to do. And if they go forward with it, good. The next step needs to be to work to get Europe to do the same thing, to wean themselves from Russian oil and gas. Now, the way to do that is to have alternative sources, and the obvious alternative source is the United States. The Biden administration has six pending applications right now 
to export liquid natural gas, and it's sitting on all six of them. Presidential leadership would be Joe Biden going on television this morning and pulling out a pen and approving all six of them and saying to Europe, you need to follow our lead, cut off Russian oil and gas, and we'll supply you, others will supply you. But the way to stop Putin, where he is vulnerable, is he leads a petro state. He is a petro tyrant. All of his revenue comes from the sale of oil and gas. If you cut that off, that's how you stop the war on Europe. But at least so far, Biden has not been serious about doing that. Senator, there have been a lot of people who have, have looked at China and thought that China could be the one who could broker some sort of deal because that partnership between Russia and China has been a strong one very recently. We saw it just with the Olympics taking off. Um, the concern this morning came when there was a headline that came out on Bloomberg that said that China's mulling buying stakes and Russian energy and commodity firms. Um, they had some tough talk last night talking about how that friendship would never be separated between the Russian and Chinese people. And then there's another headline that just came out on Bloomberg that says, look, China would like to cooperate with Europe when it comes to Ukraine as well. Are they trying to play both sides? What, what do you think can happen here? What's the plan in terms of trying to convince China to help us out with this? So, of course, China's trying to play both sides. And, and listen, I have long believed that China poses the greatest geopolitical threat to the United States for the next century. Uh, as we look over the next hundred years, China is a far more powerful adversary than Russia. Putin is our enemy. He is a bad guy. He is a dictator. But but China has a much stronger economic engine and force behind it than Russia but China's does. China's not threatening One of the risks with is, nukes at this point. I, I mean, that's the question. Do we treat China like an enemy? Do we well, hope that they help us on this front? It's pretty confusing. So, but China is threatening to invade Taiwan. And, and, and if you look at this war in Europe, Becky, it, it's really the result of two mistakes the Biden administration did. Number one, the catastrophic withdrawal from Afghanistan. And, and, and that disaster was so bad that every enemy of America, from China to Russia to Iran to North Korea, they looked to Washington. They took the measure of the man in the Oval Office. And, and unfortunately, they came to the conclusion that President Biden was weak and feckless and ineffective. And I said at the time mm -hmm. last summer, I said the odds of Russia invading Ukraine have just risen tenfold and the odds of China invading Taiwan have invas risen tenfold. But, but the, the but second mistake the Biden administration play. did is they waived sanctions on Russia and Putin, in particular Nord Stream 2. I authored the sanctions on Nord Stream 2, the energy pipeline. Putin was building from Russia to Germany to skip Ukraine. And the whole reason he wanted Nord Stream 2 was to enable him to invade Ukraine. I wrote the bipartisan sanctions that passed Congress. President Trump signed my sanctions into law, and it stopped Putin's pipeline the day those sanctions were signed. Well, Joe Biden waived those sanctions. He essentially surrendered to Putin. When he did so, and Ukraine did said too. publicly, Look, is, if you do this, Russia will invade. You're right, Germany. Okay, okay, but Becky, Germany was wrong, and Germ Germany was unhappy when President ba ba Trump signed my sanctions legislation, but we stopped the pipeline, and, and the reason Biden waived the sanctions, gave this gift to Putin, is because Germany urged him to do so. But, but when, when Biden did so, Ukraine said publicly, if you do this, Russia will invade Ukraine. Poland said publicly, if you do this, Russia will invade Ukraine. And I'll tell you, just this weekend, all 100 senators, we had a video conference call with President Zelensky. He told all of us on that call that if America had sanctioned Nord Stream 2 last year, Putin would not have invaded. This war is caused by the political mistakes of the Biden White House, and at least so far, right, Senator, they haven't indicated that they're willing to change well, course. Right. Let's, let's talk about what, what you'd be willing to do now, because, and, and I've noticed and people are on certain on a certain side are, are looking for for a bump in the president's approval ratings and he's gotten one in some polls based on i think what we've seen since the war started and maybe you you know you're we're going back and looking in hindsight at all the things that, that should have been done differently but since it started would you at least acknowledge that uh, i mean the first rule is is do no harm right? the hippocratic oath you don't want a shooting war you don't want um, necessarily, uh, I don't know, do you think we need a no-fly zone that would drag us further into no. what no. could be, okay, you don't look at that. So he, he, um, he, he got all of our allies on board, pretty tough sanctions, uh, we're, we're seeing the effects of those. 
Um, at this point, in terms, once it started, would you have done anything differently than what President Biden and, and the administration has done so far? Very much so. As I said, this war was caused by no, Biden's I, I weakness it, first it, in it, Afghanistan, I, I know, and then specifically but, regarding Nord Stream 2. But hold, let me answer your question, happened. Joe. But, Joe, but, Joe, but, look. But, all right, Joe, but what would Joe, you have let done me answer your question. Once it started, what would okay. you have done differently once let it me, started? Let, let, all right, let, let, me, let me answer your question. Okay. We should have imposed the sanctions required by law in Nord Stream 2 last year. We should have imposed them sooner. I've introduced legislation in Congress to make those sanctions permanent. But Putin doesn't believe those sanctions are real because Biden and Germany have both already indicated that they will waive them in the past. Putin believes once the crisis passes, Biden's going to let him turn on Nord Stream 2 and he's going to continue to get his gas to market. Pass legislation making the sanctions on Nord Stream 2 permanent to make clear that that pipeline will never, ever, ever turn on. Number two, impose massive sanctions. The sanctions that Biden put in in the first place exempted energy. Putin's major revenue source is oil and gas. Biden exempted oil and gas. That is what is funding this Russian war. Number three, we need to focus in particular on ensuring that we provide offensive military weaponry so that the Ukrainians can defend themselves. We shouldn't have a no-fly zone. We shouldn't have American soldiers in harm's way. The problem with a no-fly zone is you've got American pilots engaging in combat with Russian pilots. That is a recipe for disaster. That's a mistake. But when I talked to President Zelensky this weekend, he said his number one priority is fighter jets because the Russians have control of the air. And there are fighter jets available, for example, Poland has a number of MiGs, Russian MiGs, that the Ukrainian fighter pilots know how to fly. But the Biden administration right now is being utterly lukewarm. They're like, well, if you want to give them the MiGs, you can. If you don't, you don't have to. I, I can tell you, I met with a senior official of the Biden State Department last night. And what I told her is you need to be clear and unequivocal to Poland and to other allies. Provide those fighter jets. Let the Ukrainians defend themselves. They are inspiring the world with their heroism. And if they have the military equipment, they can defend themselves. But Biden right now, we've seen half measure after half measure. And to date, the Biden administration has been tougher on American oil and gas production than they have been on Russian oil and gas production. That doesn't make any sense. Sen Senator, were you in the Obama administration? I think there was a, I don't know, a, a, the, the notion that there was an unstable government in, in Ukraine or, or even two, maybe too close to, uh, uh, to Russia at yep. that point. Yes. So, so no weapons, really. The Trump administration, I, I, I hear Republicans say, well, they sent arms uh, to Ukraine, but it wasn't a lot. It was, it was kind of almost a token. So did you vote to do that or vote against sending weapons to, to Ukraine during the Trump administration? Well, but there have been, there have been different periods of it. What, you, what you, I can say you is you're no right. Vote? Early, did, did, did you have a no vote I, on some, on some, I, I, on some to, to be honest, there have been enough votes. I, I, I don't remember each, each of the votes. But, but what I can tell you is, is early in the Obama administration, you had a, a puppet government, a fellow named Yanukovych, who basically worked for Putin. The Ukrainian people rose up and had a revolution in the Maidan Square. Uh, and, and, and the response, the, the military police fired snipers at, 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 at the protesters. I went and traveled to Kiev shortly after that because the people of Ukraine want to be with America. They want to be with Europe. And, and, and we saw a government rise up that, that was a democratically elected government that wanted to be allies with America. That's part of why Putin and Russia are so angry because their puppet government was rejected by the people. I can tell you at that time, what I was advocating for was that we provide lethal military aid to Ukraine. This is in 2014 I was advocating for it. And as you noted, Barack Obama wouldn't do that. He was sending them literally blankets and teddy bears. When, when Russia invaded Crimea, the southern part of Ukraine, B B Obama refused to provide lethal military weaponry to fight against them. So this pattern of weakness under Trump, we did provide lethal military weapons to, to, to Ukraine, and I support doing that. And under Biden, we have been, once this war started, we have been providing some lethal military aid, in particular javelins and stingers, and those are needed. But what President Zelensky has said his top priority is, is fighter jets. And here, what Poland is saying is they will provide the MiGs to Ukraine if the United States commits to backfilling with F-16s and the Biden administration is dragging their feet. And they're dragging the feet 
be because there are other players in Europe that don't want that to happen, that are still counseling weakness. And, and Joe, if, if history teaches anything, it, it is that appeasement doesn't work. It is that the policy of surrendering and giving in to a tyrant like Putin only encourages more aggression. We need strength and not weakness, and we need strength tempered with wisdom. Right now, we're not seeing that. Well, we may be getting the, uh, we may be doing the oil side of things today if, if, if the reports are true about the, the embargo. Senator, thanks. We'll, we'll follow the progress of your energy. I don't know, I don't, you may have to wait for a, someone new in the Oval Office to sign that piece of legislation, I would imagine, that, uh, that you're proposing, but you never know. Thank you. Good, good to have you on today. Thank you, Joe. Okay.